Welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. This is Dr. Bison EM. Today we're talking about histological techniques and microscopy in human anatomy. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Our lesson objectives today are number one, to understand histological techniques and to understand microscopy. Let's have a recap and an introduction to histology. What is histology? Histology is the study of body tissue structure under the microscope. Tissues have two interacting components. If you remember from the last video, we say tissues are made up of cells and extracellular matrix. So extracellular matrix supports cells and produce, and cells in turn produce extracellular matrix. Extracellular matrix is composed of protein fibers. There are three types of protein fibers. Collagen fibers, which are your most abundant protein fibers in your body. Reticular fibers and elastic fibers. Extracellular matrix also contains ground substance, which contains about 70% water, proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans, which are your GAGs. All right. Now, for you to study these tissues under the microscope, you need to prepare these tissues from the body. And there are several steps that you need to undergo or the tissue needs to undergo for it to be effectively be viewed under the microscope. All right. So the most important part of tissue study under a microscope is tissue, tissue preparation to be studied under a light compound microscope. All right, so under the light compound microscope, tissues are examined visually in a beam of transmitted light. Now, you need to understand that, that some tissues are too thick to be studied under a microscope because light cannot pass through. So these tissues which are too thick need to be sliced into thin slices using a device called a microton here a microton so tissue preparation there are eight sta stages that you need to undergo number one you need to obtain your fresh specimen from your body so you need to obtain the specimen that you are interested in studying from your body for example you want to study heart tissue muscle from uh, a body, you need to obtain that specimen from the body. Number two is fixation, which is that preservation of tissues in its original condition. Number three, dehydration, which is just removal of water from the name itself, followed by clearing, and then embedding, trimming, sectioning, staining, and mounting. So I'm going to explain these preparatory stages one by one so that we have a feel or a deeper understanding of how these histological techniques work. So you just need to understand that histological techniques are just stages that tissues undergo in order for them to be viewed under a microscope. Let's get into it. Fixation. So this is the process of treating pieces of organs or tissue as soon as possible after removal from the body with solutions of stabilizing or cross-linking compounds called fixatives. Now, the reason why we are treating tissues with fixatives is so that we avoid autolysis of the tissues and preserve the cells and the tissue structure. Autolysis is simply tissue death. So what happens is that if you remove a tissue from the body, the enzymes inside of the tissue are going to kill that tissue. They are going to denature the organelles in that tissue. They are going to denature the cells in that tissue. So now, to preserve the cell from death and to preserve the structure of the cell, you put the tissues in a fixative solution immediately after you obtain it from the body. So, the examples of fixatives that we use 
are different in light compound microscopy and in electron microscopy. In light microscopy, we use a fixative that we call formalin. This is the most common fixative. Formalin is just a buffered isotonic solution of 37% formaldehyde. Electron microscopy uses a fixative that we call rutealdehyde. Now, the purpose of fixation, as alluded to earlier, is just to preserve the morphology, which is the structure of the cell, and to also preserve the chemical composition of the tissue to prevent autolysis or decay or decomposition. Additionally, it should harden the tissue for easy manipulation to solidify the material and to influence staining. This is the reason why fixation is done on cells. The next step is called decalcification. Now, decalcification is only done in tissues that have got a large amount of calcium salts. These tissues include bone and two teeth. Okay, so any tissue that has got a large amount of calcium salts, an additional step called decalcification is done before they are subjected to dehydration. Okay, the reason why we decalcify tissues that have got excess calcium salts is that the calcium salts should not interfere with the staining procedure. Calcium has got a property of interacting with the stains. So we want to remove all the calcium out of the tissue before we stain it. The next step is dehydration. So dehydration is simply the process of removing water from the tissue. How do we de dehydrate tissues? We dehydrate tissues by immersing them in ascending grades of alcohol. So we we'll start by immersing the tissue in 50% alcohol. From then, we take it to 70% alcohol, then to 90% alcohol. Last but not the least, we take it to absolute alcohol, which is 100% alcohol, in order to embed it in paraffin wax, which is not miscible in water. So, tissue remains in each of these grades of alcohol for 30 to 60 minutes. So, it's 30 minutes in 50% alcohol, 30 minutes in 70% alcohol, 30 minutes in 90% alcohol, and 30 minutes in absolute alcohol. Dehydration overall takes place or takes about two to four hours. The next step is called clearing. So clearing is uh, where after dehydration, the tissue is treated with a clearing agent, such as benzene or petrol for two to three hours. The reason why we want to clear this is that we want to remove the alcohol that we used to dehydrate the solution with clear liquid. So we want to replace the agent of the alcohol with a clear agent, which is a clearing agent, which is benzene or petrol. From clearing, we go to embedding and sectioning. Embedding and sectioning. So tissues are embedded in a solid medium to facilitate sectioning. So in order to cut very thin sections, tissues must be infiltrated after fixation with embedding material that imparts a rigid consistency to the tissue. So embedding is simply making the tissue very rigid so that it can be cut very smoothly. So embedding materials that we use include paraffin and plastic raisins. So paraffin is the one that we commonly use for, for embedding. So raisins as well can be used for both light and electron microscopy. All right. So if we go further now to explain how embedding is done, embedding involves two steps. The first step is called impregnation. 
So after clearing the tissue is impregnated with molten paraffin at about 58 degrees Celsius in a oven for two hours. For two hours. After impregnation, the tissue is placed in molds containing molten paraffin. Okay. So after impregnation, you place it in molds containing paraffin. Amazing. So now, after all those steps are done, then you can stain your tissue. And then after staining, you can view it under the microscope. All right. So most cells and extracellular material that are found in your tissue are completely colorless. So if they're completely colorless, you can't view them under the microscope. So in order for you to study them under the microscope, you need to stain them. You need to stain them. So methods of staining have been devised so that you can clearly see the parts of your tissue after staining. So there are two types of stains that are the, the tissue components that stain can be in two parts. There are, some, there are some parts of the cell that stain with basic dyes and the parts of the cell that stain with acidic dyes. Okay? So tissue components that stain with basic dyes are termed as basophilic and are blue in color. But tissue stains with an affinity for an acidic dye are termed as acidophilic and are pink or orange in color. Now, examples of basic dyes include hematoxylin, toluidine blue, and methylene blue. These are your examples of your basic dyes. Examples of acidic dyes include eosin, orange, G, and acid, fustian. Now, there's a dye that is commonly used in histology to stain tissues, and this is called this is called H and E. It is a combination of hematoxylin and eosin. So this is most commonly used in histological procedure. Then when tissues are stained now and are visible, and tissue parts and components are visible, then they are mounted on the slides, and the slides can then be studied on the microscope. The slides can then be studied on the microscope. Those, so those are some of the hist those are the histological techniques that we use to prepare tissues from the body. We apply all those techniques, and then after all those techniques have been effectively been implemented, then we can mount our tissue specimen on our slides, and we can study it under a microscope. All right, now let's look at microscopy. Let's look at the microscope, the instrument that is used to see objects that cannot be seen with our naked eyes. Tissues are very small and parts of tissues are very small. They're not macroscopic, they're microscopic. So in order for us to understand the interacting parts of a tissue, we need a compa a a microscope in order to see those okay so the science of investigating small objects using such an instrument which is the microscope is called microscopy it is called microscopy microscopic means invisible to the eye unless aided by a microscope now there are two types of microscopes that we use in histology a simple microscope and an electron microscope. What I'm projecting to you right now is a simple microscope. And this is a simple illustration of the simple microscope. So it has these basic parts. This is the eyepiece. This is the nose piece revolver. It revolves these parts here that the Kesa is pointing at. These are called objectives. This here is the stage where the specimen is placed and it has an aperture here where the light comes in from the light source. And then this is the base. These are the adjustments, the coarse adjustments and the fine adjustments. 
All right. These are stage controllers. So this is the simple microscope. We use this to study our tissues in the lab. So what are the functions of microscopes? Number one, for cell and tissue analysis, examining forensic evidence, studying atomic structures, studying a row of a protein in a cell. So we're going to study our cells, study our tissues, even the anatomy the, of the atomic structures, the atomic structures that we did in foundation in first year, the structure of an atom is studied using a microscope. Now, let's shift our attention to the types of microscopes. Okay, so microscopes can be grouped in two groups. There is the light compound microscope and the electron microscope. So this grouping is based on what interacts with the specimen sample to generate the image. So when you are using light or photons to interact with your specimen, that those type of mi mi uh, microscopes are, are called light compound microscopes or optical microscopes. Optical is just light. Okay. But if you are using electrons to interact with your sample, then that is an electron microscope. So the microscope is named according to what interacts with your sample. If it is light, it is called a light compound microscope. If it is electrons, it is called an electron microscope. All right. Now, what I am projecting right now are the subtypes of your optical microscopes and your electron microscopes. So under your optical microscopes, which are just your light compound microscope, we have the conventional bright field microscope, which is the most commonly used light compound microscope. We have the fluorescence microscope, phase contrast, differential interf interference, polarizing and confocal microscope. Under the electron microscopes, we have the transmission electron microscope, which is denoted as TEM, and we have the scanning electron microscope, which is just denoted as SAME. Okay, so let's try to get into the types of optical microscopes. The bright field microscope is the widely used microscopes by the students in histology, and this is the microscope that you'll be using in your labs when you'll be studying your histology. Okay, so in the bright field microscope, stand preparations are examined by means of ordinary light that passes through the specimen. It is composed of optical and mechanical parts to move and focus the specimen. All right, so this is the bright field microscope. What I showed you there, that was the bright field microscope. In fluorescence microscopy, tissue sections are usually irradiated with UV light. So in fluorescence microscopy, remember, we use ultraviolet light. In bright field microscopy, we were just using ordinary light. But in fluorescence microscopy, we use UV light. In fluorescence microscopy, substances appear bright on a dark background. Okay, on a dark background. In phase contrast microscopy, phase contrast microscopy is uh, usually used to view and stain cells and tissue sections, which are usually transparent and colorless. So, phase contrast microscopy studies tissues before you stain them. It is a very interesting type of microscopy because it can actually study tissues before you stain them. Colorless tissues can be studied using phase contrast microscopy. So, just remember, phase contrast microscopy, your tissues are not stained. All right. Now, let's proceed and look at our last component of this lecture video, which is your electron microscopy. There are two types of electron microscopy.
there's the transmission electron microscopy and your scanning electron uh, microscopy. So the 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 how it works, how this microscopy works, is that there is interaction of a beam of electrons with a tissue sample. What I'm projecting right now is a picture of a scanning electron microscopy. So in a scanning electron microscopy, you usually have a cathode here on the top, what I'm highlighting here. This is a cathode. The cathode will produce a beam of electrons. So in the cathode, here, yeah, the cathode is in the electron gun. Okay. So the electron gun is going to produce your electrons from the cathode and they will move through the anode. And then these electron beams will go and will be focused by the lens on the specimen. When this beam of electrons are focused on the specimen, there's a detector of electrons here, which will now project it to the monitor. So you have a monitor that is connected to a beam of electrons that is landing on your specimen here. After the beam of electrons reaches your specimen, they will be detected by your detector and an image will be formed on your monitor, on your computer monitor. This type of electron gives you 3D dimensions of your tissue. So this is just an electron microscope in, in real life. This is how it looks in real time. This is an electron microscopy. I'm sure you won't have uh, an opportunity to see this because they are very few, they are limited. And uh, at the university, we don't have these yet. So you only get to see them in lecture videos like this or in videos. Okay, so that was our lecture on microscopy. So this image here just shows you a 3D view of red blood cells that was taken using a light compound microscopy. Okay, so this was our lesson on microscopy and histological techniques in histology. How we prepare our tissues for viewing under a microscope and the types of microscopes that we use to view our tissues. We've come to the end of our video. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Register for lessons on the number that is projecting on a screen. Excellent Grades Academy is the way to go for your, all your academic needs, for your medicine. Let's do medicine together. Let's become medical doctors together. Until next time, do not forget to subscribe, hit that notification button, and be notified when a new video is uploaded. All right, see you in the next video.